I uh, was preparing to uh, preach and uh, just uh, thinking on the grace of God. I just the song dropped into my heart and I sang it, I sang the song and and I shared you. I hope you'll be blessed by it. Lord, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, what a privilege again this uh, morning to share this devotional message with you. Remember that last week I said that we're going to focus on grace this week, explore more on grace, and I hope that you had a, you have had a grace uh, full week weekdays. And um, on today's uh, episode uh, about grace, I would like to. Uh, share on the grace of God, especially what Paul talked about to the Corinthian churches. You see, uh, the Corinthian church is very spiritual uh, church, as well as knows a lot of things. And uh, I would like to turn to the First Corinthians chapter eight, where uh, most of my ideas are found in this uh, part of the scripture. And First Corinthians chapter eight, uh, verses uh, from the start, he talked about uh, uh, talking about the grace of God. In verse one, it says, uh, "Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the church of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their Deep poverty uh, abounded in the rich uh, in the rich of their liberality. Now he talked about the grace that was given to the church in Macedonia. Uh, that church has received grace. You see, God gives pre- grace to a certain congregation, or he could also give grace to individual people. He could give grace in a family, and their grace, their experience of grace, uh, Paul mentioned particularly in this part of the story that they had a deep poverty. Now, this is, you know, poverty is a comparison. Somebody may be poor or extremely poor based or compared to a reference. So Paul must have uh, or, or he had a reference point to tell that the Macedonians were deeply poor, especially compared to the Corinthians, because he was um, he was challenging them uh, based on the Macedonian church. So, and then he said, "But they have something special to this Macedonian people. They were generous and giver. But how can be a person be poor and be?" Uh, also generous and liberal and have something to give. And they have deep poverty, but they were also, uh, were deeply, they, they were also rich in liberality or giving freely with all that. You know, all the story in the Bible, we find people who give the most greater gift is not like people who have a lot of things, uh, probably a little. You remember that Jesus uh, fed 5,000 people uh, by uh, uh, just a boy's lunch, two fish and five loaves of bread? He fed multitudes of people 
because he just blessed that. And that person who gave that little thing is out of his poverty or out of his necessity. He gave, but he had, of course, lunch and, of course, 12 baskets full of leftover was given. A, I don't know, maybe later the Lord said, give that boy, you know, let him take it. We don't know. But anyway, we know that. Everyone who gives receives more. That's the principle. You remember that Elijah went to the Sarapten woman and he she had the last meal to eat and her deep poverty. And the last meal, and she had very little oil and a little flour in a pot. And Elisha said to her, give me water. And when she went to, to, to bring him water, he said, please make a cake and bring it to me. But she told him, now I have the last meal and I, my, and I and my son are going to eat that and die. But he told her, don't fear, bring it to me. And then this is what the Lord is saying to you. You will not, not die, the, the, the oil will not run dry, nor the flour from the pot, from, from the bar, and, and then until the famine is over. And she had, according to the word of Elijah, she had all that food during the uh, uh, drought season. And then after that also, she had, you know, read it, First Corinthians, First uh, Kings. You will find that this woman also had a restoration letter in many ways. And that's what we see here. Now, these Macedonians have deep poverty, but they were also given grace. So when you receive grace, you can't help it give. <laughs> that's exciting and wonderful. When, when you receive grace, it doesn't matter how much you have, but you want to share it and give. So Paul is saying to them that something that the Corinthians had to learn also from this experience. Now, if we continue reading from verse 4, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the sentence. That means their gift was given to the sentence that are in need. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of the by the will of God. You see, these Macedonians are, of course, they gave their life to Christ. And they make the Lord their life. God is number one. And he is Lord, not their money, not their property. And then, of course, they also knew that Paul and the other ministers with him are faithful servants. So they they were not asking anything. They just give themselves to them. And then, of course, they were not just scattering their money. They were giving to the to to the faithful ones. And so, so we are status that we uh, uh, ask. He had uh, he had begun, so he would also complete this grace to you as well. Now he's telling them and comparing this one, but as you abound in everything. Now this the Corinthians were abound in everything. You see, I mean that's so exciting in faith. Now he mentioned what they were abound of in faith. Imagine that they had such a good faith in Christ and in everything, even in God's provision, in answering the prayers, in the healings, in many ways. Because if you read 1 Corinthians 12, you will find they move in the gifts of the Spirit and the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirit, prophecy, and the gift of faith and healings. I mean, he explained to them and they had that experience, they had that grace in speech. Now here, in faith and speech and knowledge, in all diligence, in your love for us, they have all of this grace abound on them, you know, in everything. And, and then he said, ask that you abound in this grace also, in the gift of giving. So that's also grace. Not only just be abound in faith, not only be abound in knowledge, not only be abound in speech, not only be, be abound in being diligent, but also give, give, give. That he was telling them, be abound in the gift of giving. So he also prayed for them, I believe. And But one thing also he told them, the core of their prosperity, why they had much more than the Macedonians, and why they should be sharers. Now we read the next few verses, and which is very powerful, and I believe that we also had partaken that same grace. For it he said, I speak not by uh, commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. 
Now, is other means the Macedonians you mentioned about the giving, and if you are sincere, and they show it, you know. And then he said, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he's talking about grace again. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, which is expressed in giving, that through, though he was rich, yet for you, for your sake, he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. So the Corinthians were rich, not just because of hardworking. No, 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 no. Of course, good to be diligent and hardworking because they have diligence, knowledge, and all that. But also, something they need to realize that, that their prosperity, whenever their prosperity is getting increased, it's because Christ, who was rich, came to this earth empty, especially when he died on the cross naked, even not having any clothes. And he took that thorn which which God cursed the ground because of Adam was on his head to break the poverty curse from our life, from my life, from the Corinthians' life, from my brother, from your life, and my sister, from your life. He died on the cross and that curse of poverty is broken forever from our life. Praise the name of the Lord. And now he said, now, this is the grace of God. This is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He became poor to make us rich. So when every time your prosperity increases, know that is because of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's very exciting. And then he said to them, now you're rich. Okay, no, that is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That wealth is the result of the work of grace in your life. And then he says, now they, he encouraged them to uh, share and give. Uh, and, you know, if you go a little further down, it says, for I did not mean that others should be, uh, should be eased and you burdened, but by and equality that now, at this time, your abundance may supply their lack, and that their abundance also may supply your lack, that there may be equality. So there, they have some kind of gathering. And then, if you keep on reading in First Corinthians chapter, I mean Second Corinthians chapter eight, uh, if you keep on reading the verses. He talked about more on the people that he's going to send, like Timothy and or Titus, I mean, and how faithful people that they should trust them and treat them well and support them in their substances. And, of course, because he doesn't want them to be used by people or misused, you know, but in knowing, understanding, and led by the Spirit and understand the purpose of their prosperity and sharing to others their prosperity is is a way of increment. They will increase, not decrease by by giving to the Lord. And I want to just, you know, uh, take you into uh, the next chapter, chapter 9. He, he talked about also in the same place about that grace, um, chapter uh, 9 of Second Corinthians from verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. And then he said that you are, always having all sufficiency in all things. Now, grace can make you uh, uh, to have abundance in all things, in knowledge and, you know, and all that. And God is able to do that. And we need to trust Him. And then it says, in all things, and may have an abundance for every good work. I mean, when you give, that he is telling them, you are going to have more than abundance for every good work. Hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. And then, and then, if, of course, he keep on mentioning from the book of Psalm, I think Psalm uh, 12, 9, he said, uh, and then he, he quoted that verse, as it is written, he has despised abroad, he has given us to the poor, his righteousness endures forever, a person who does that. And then verse 10, he says, now may he who supplies it to the sower, and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. While you are enriched in everything, for 
all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. So whenever they give, and the Paul and the others, partaking their gifts and using for the gospel purpose and, and meeting the other needs of other people, and he said we also give thanks to God. And that giving thanks to God and that prayer goes before it gets like an an. an aroma and smells and going to God and like just God said to Cornelius when his gift is and prayer ascended to heaven and God sent an angel to Cornelius to tell him in the book of Acts chapter 10 to give him a special grace now and he told him that God has remembered your gift remembered your prayer now God sent him an angel to help him about something that he doesn't, he didn't understand. He told him to to call Peter, and there's some knowledge that he's going to give you, and that knowledge will be about salvation, about the Holy Spirit baptism. There's so many spiritual breakthrough came to uh, uh, Cornelius, but God uh, did not forget the grace that he shared. And, and the grace that he has given him. So God gave you grace not to hoard it, but to share it. And as you do, there is more coming to you. And I speak that there is greater uh, uh, prosperity in the days I had. And there is more that God has remembered the grace and the gifts. And you are going to be more uh, you're going to have sufficiency for all liberality. Praise the name of the Lord. And and, and that you will be blessed. And I, I, I love the scriptures. And the one thing that when you, you know, back up and think about more on grace, think about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. If you have thought only that he died for your sins, not only that, he died for your sickness also. He carried all our sickness on the cross. And he said, by his stripes we were healed. Not only that, he broke our poverty, which was a curse. So you don't have a curse. You're not cursed. Christ broke the curse of poverty. That's the grace of God. In Galatians chapter 3, that we may, uh, of course, I, I love to read that scripture, which talks about, in, in Galatians, uh, let me turn my Bible there. One moment is just one, one book away, one book away from First Corinthians. Hallelujah, uh, Galatians chapter three and I think twelve, uh, thirteen and fourteen. Uh, it talks about here for uh, uh, oh yeah, sorry. Here it says therefore. Uh, Where I was taking on Ephesians, I, uh, Galatians chapter 3, yeah. And then the Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having the curse of the law means, you know, all, everything. You go and read Deuteronomy chapter 20, all the curse part. It's just, I mean, you don't love it to read the curse part. Uh, the blessing part is awesome. All this blessing shall come upon you and will find you. But the curse part also, if they don't obey, there are so many curses written. Now here, Christ has redeemed or bowed us back that that curse wouldn't come to us. And from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That's what he did that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, means us, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Praise the name of the Lord. That's just the blessing of God. So you are entitled for all the blessings that God has said. Don't you be thankful, and are you not so grateful for this grace you know, I mean, every day just get up and say, God, thank you for your grace. And every time when you see your prosperity increases, remember this, it is the grace of God. It will increase. And I speak this word over your life. It will increase. You will have more next year than ever that you had in your life. You will have more next month than ever. You will have more, oh, praise the name of the Lord. And as you do that, you do also receive the grace to give for his work. Praise the name of the Lord. Probably, if you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life and have not received the grace of salvation, let this be the point that you give your life to him. Saying, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive my sins. 
I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying for my sins and carried all my sicknesses and poverty and curse. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I believe that Jesus is coming to your life and you're saved. And if you are saved, be excited on that. And, and may that grace continue upon your life. Now, this grace is really, really what the New Testament teaches on giving. There's more to talk about, but you know, just ponder on this First Corinthians chapter 8 and also chapter 9. And also read uh, Timothy chapter uh, 6, uh, verse 17, 18, and 19. He talked about there, um, he told Timothy to, to tell the rich to give that they may not trust in the riches that are not trustworthy, the, you know, but they may trust in the Lord. You know, the more you give, you means that you trust and say to God, I trust that you're going to give me. That's why you give. Otherwise, you can't give unless you believe that God will give you back. And when he gives, and he gives you uh, uh, abundantly uh, beyond that you ask, and imagine as he promised in his word. Well, I hope that you have a blessed, uh, a blessed week and, and pondering more on grace. And God bless you. I just would like to close in prayer. Father, I thank you for everyone who uh, uh, listened this message in the car, in the house, in anywhere in the workplace. And I speak your blessing to be upon their life. And as you've promised in his, in your word, let every curse be broken in the name of Jesus. Let them realize that when they get increase in the days ahead and, and, and even till this day, let them understand that you took all the poverty and broke that curse from their life. That's the very reason of increment. And I thank you, Father, and bless them and heal every sickness. I rebuke every power of Satan, every sickness, every demon that come against them and harass their body which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I rebuke you, devil, take your hands off from their life, from their family, from their businesses, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. May your blessing and grace be upon them in the coming week and days and months, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for giving for this ministry, and I believe this grace will, will uh, meet you and prosper you. Have a blessed day. God bless you.